The NFL has had some iconic players over the years with some unique signature moves. Whether it's an end zone dance, a post-tackle celebration, or just a recognizable move that they have in the middle of the game, nobody will ever forget these top 10 signature moves in the NFL. Now guys, before we get to the content, please take a moment to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on my notifications because we are near our goal of 100,000 subscribers on this channel, which is a crazy feat considering the fact that we just started uploading content four months ago. On top of that, I wanted to take a moment to shout out a brand new channel that I have been developing, which is a soccer channel called Flight FC. We're currently at about 2,200 subscribers, so if you happen to be a soccer fan and you like my content, I'm sure you'll like that channel as well. Aside from that, break! Mic check, one, two, one, two. Let's start out with number 10, Jimmy Graham's goalpost dunk. When Jimmy Graham was at the University of Miami, he was a standout on the hardwood, playing all four years for the Miami Hurricanes men's basketball team. He only played football in his senior season at Miami, but his size and raw talent were enough to make him a third round draft pick of the New Orleans Saints in 2010. During his first season for the Saints, he was limited to backing former first round pick Jeremy Shockey, but he had a breakout season in 2011, which was his second year in the league. That year, he exploded for 99 receptions and 1,310 yards, earning his first of five Pro Bowl invitations. As an ode to his basketball background, Graham quickly became known for his signature goalpost dunk after scoring a touchdown. It was an immediate crowd pleaser, especially at home in the New Orleans Superdome. Not everybody was happy with the dunks, however, and an example of this occurred during a game at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta in 2013. Jimmy Graham scored a long touchdown and celebrated with his signature dunk, but this time hung on to the goalpost crossbar like it was a basketball rim, bending it significantly. Not surprising, considering how Jimmy Graham is 6 foot 7 and 265 pounds. As a result of this, a brand new rule was passed by the NFL in 2014, banning the goalpost dunk. And after being fined several times in the preseason for it, Graham reluctantly announced that he would retire the celebration. At number 9, we have Ryan Kerrigan's Ode to Shawn Michaels. When he was an All-American at Purdue University, Ryan Kerrigan was a pretty soft-spoken guy even after being selected as a first-round draft pick by the Washington Redskins. The outside linebacker let his actions on the field speak for themselves. Then, in 2014, which was his third year in the league, fellow Redskins linebacker Will Compton encouraged Kerrigan to come up with his own signature celebration. Compton showed Kerrigan the WWE wrestler Shawn Michaels and his HBK pose. Still, Kerrigan was hesitant. He felt like it was a little too flashy and a bit too cocky, which wasn't his style. But Compton continued to urge him, and finally, Kerrigan relented. Kerrigan unveiled the celebration during a four-sack performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it immediately became a hit with fans. Kerrigan has had plenty of opportunities to practice his celebration pose, racking up 90 sacks so far during his nine years in the league, all with Washington. In fact, Kerrigan may have reason to celebrate early in the upcoming season. He is only one sack away from tying the Redskins all-time franchise sack leader Dexter Manley's total of 91 sacks in a Redskins uniform. And considering the fact that the Redskins got him a phenomenal once-in-a-generation type running mate in Chase Young from this past year's NFL Draft, I'm pretty confident that he has plenty more epic seasons in the tank. At number 8, we have Arian Foster's Namaste Bow. Arian Foster was once called the most interesting man in football. 
He holds a degree in philosophy from the University of Tennessee. He is an avid writer of poetry, and his name is a contraction of the word Aquarian, which means water bearer or holder of knowledge. He's a recording artist under the name of Bobby Fino, and Arian Foster broke into the NFL as an undrafted free agent in 2009 with the Houston Texans. He spent seven seasons with them and left as the all-time franchise leader in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. His signature move was the Namaste Bow, which he would do after scoring a touchdown. Foster was asked why he bowed after a touchdown, and he said that the Namaste Bow is a sign of respect and that it's meant to show respect for the game of football, which has given him so much in his life. Bravo, Arian. Bravo. I don't think he stepped out either. That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen. At number seven, we have Odell Beckham Jr.'s one-handed catch. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, OBJ comes from a family of world-class athletes. His father, Odell Beckham Sr., was a running back for Louisiana State University, the same school Odell Beckham Jr. would later attend. His mother, Heather Van Norman, was a national champion track athlete, also at LSU. He followed in his parents' footsteps, becoming a star wide receiver at LSU and playing in the 2012 National Championship game in just his freshman season. He was selected in the first round of the 2014 NFL Draft by the New York Giants and quickly became one of the best wide receivers in the game. He caught more than 90 passes for over 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns or more during his first three seasons with the Giants. And in his first year in the league, he was good enough to earn Offensive Rookie of the Year honors. But here's the reason why you and I probably recognize Odell Beckham Jr. the most. In a Sunday night game against the Dallas Cowboys, Eli Manning would roll out of the pocket and heave the ball to a tightly covered Odell Beckham Jr. running down the sideline. Somehow, despite blatant pass interference, he managed to reach behind him while falling backward and make a spectacular one-handed fingertip catch for a touchdown. The play was reviewed and confirmed. This catch was immediately hailed as one of the single greatest catches in NFL history. Beckham Jr. continued to make remarkable one-handed catches throughout his career including nearly repeating the initial catch after being traded to the Cleveland Browns prior to the start of the 2019 NFL season. But none will ever be as great as the catch that introduced Odell Beckham Jr. to the NFL. At number six, we have Marshawn Lynch's Beast Mode celebration. Marshawn grew up in Oakland, California, raised by his mother, Delisa. He was a well-rounded athlete competing for his high school in four different sports basketball, football, track and field, and wrestling. On the football field, Lynch was just as versatile, playing defensive back, linebacker, running back, and even quarterback. Lynch went on to play college football at the University of California, where he would become the second leading rusher in school history. After a stellar collegiate career, Lynch was drafted in the first round of the 2007 NFL Draft by the Buffalo Bills. Lynch quickly became known for his bruising style of running, choosing to run through defenders instead of around them. This was in sharp contrast to his friendly and understated personality off the field. Lynch's beast mode moment came in his first career playoff game, which was a 2010 wildcard matchup between his new team, the Seattle Seahawks, and the New Orleans Saints. Lynch took a handoff from Seahawks quarterback Matt Hasselbeck and went to the left, but quickly cut back and proceeded to break about 10 arm tackles. One Saints player, quarterback Tracy Porter, got stiff-armed so hard that Lynch literally threw him about five yards downfield. He continued breaking tackles and cutting back upfield until he reached the end zone for a 67-yard touchdown. The Beast Mode touchdown has been hailed as one of the toughest and gutsiest runs ever seen in pro football. But Marshawn Lynch is known for something that he does more consistently in addition to this. Every time Marshawn Lynch would score a touchdown, my man would go and celebrate by eating a pack of Skittles. This has gotten so ridiculous that Marshawn Lynch was offered a Skittle sponsorship, and when the Seattle Seahawks announced that they were re-signing him for the end of the 2019 NFL season, Marshawn Lynch literally pulled up to practice in a car that was filled with Skittles. Man, you gotta love beast mode, and you gotta protect your chicken. Don't take care of y'all chicken. At number five, we have Aaron Rodgers' Discount Double Check Championship Celebration. 
Aaron Rodgers has a larger than life personality, and it keeps his fans guessing what his next move will be. From his choice of facial hair to his penchant for Hail Marys, Rodgers is a fan favorite in Green Bay. Rodgers was drafted famously in the end of the first round by the Packers out of the University of California, but instead of being named the immediate starter, as most first round quarterbacks are, he was second on the depth chart to future Hall of Famer Brett Favre. During his three years of mentorship behind Favre, Rodgers was also the scout team quarterback, competing in practice against the starting defense. This is where he developed the championship belt celebration. Whenever he made a great play on the practice squad against the starting defense, he would put his hands on his waist and simulate putting on a WWE championship belt. The taunt originated in the WWE where wrestlers like Triple H would taunt their opponent by pantomiming putting on the championship belt. After Rodgers moved into the starting role after Favre's departure, he began using the celebration when he would score a rushing touchdown. The move gained celebrity status during the Packers' 2010 Super Bowl winning season, where Rodgers was named Super Bowl MVP and took to the podium to accept the Lombardi Trophy with a replica WWE Championship belt on his shoulder. After that came the State Farm Discount Double Check commercials featuring an exciting fan giving Rodgers the championship belt taunt. The championship belt celebration has followed Aaron Rodgers in what would undoubtedly be a Hall of Fame career once he hangs up his belt, so to speak. At number 4 we have Von Miller's Championship Dance. Now, Von Miller was an absolute beast on the field at Texas A&M University where he was a consensus All-American and earned the Butkiss Award as the nation's top linebacker. His outstanding college career was rewarded as he was selected with the second overall pick in the 2011 NFL Draft by the Denver Broncos. Miller made an immediate impact on the NFL and quickly became known as one of the elite pass rushers in the league. In just his fourth season, his Denver Broncos defeated league MVP Cam Newton, who was the number one overall pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, and the Carolina Panthers to win Super Bowl 50. Von Miller was named Super Bowl MVP. Besides his football skills, Miller has made another name for himself around the league as having one of the most creative sack dance celebrations. He almost never does the same dance twice. He mixes hip hop dance crazes with his own creativeness. Sometimes he goes a little overboard and was fined in 2015 for an obscene pelvic thrust celebration that was later mocked by comedians Key and Peel with their sketch, Hingle McCringleberry. In 2017, the NFL finally lightened up and relaxed their rules on penalizing touchdown celebrations. Miller took this as an opportunity and requested that the Broncos hire a choreographer. They declined, so Miller took it upon himself to choreograph dances with his fellow defenders. Even the Broncos offensive line got some coaching from Miller. Miller even took his dancing prowess one step further. In 2016, fresh off of his Super Bowl MVP performance, Miller was a guest on the hit TV show, Dancing with the Stars. Miller impressed the judges but was ultimately voted off of the show before the final dance off. At number 3, we have Rob Gronkowski's Gronk Spike. Few players have the combination of personality and skill that Rob Gronkowski has. Gronk, as he is known around the league, comes from a football family. His four brothers all played football in both college and professionally. Gronk played football at Arizona for only two years, but it was enough to set school records for both yards per reception and receiving yards for tight ends. After sitting out his junior season due to a back injury, he was drafted in the second round of the 2010 NFL Draft by the New England Patriots. Gronk had the luxury of being drafted onto a team that was in the middle of the most dominant 20-year run in NFL history. The Patriots had legendary QB Tom Brady, and with only a few exceptions, Brady had managed to lead the Patriots to three Super Bowl titles in four years, with mostly average players around him. The addition of an all-world talent like Gronk was a recipe for continued success. Gronk quickly made a name for himself, leading the league in receiving touchdowns in only his second season, and he was the first ever tight end to accomplish that feat. Gronk's larger-than-life personality was manifested on the football field in his touchdown celebration. The Gronk spike made its debut in the third quarter of the third game in his rookie season. Gronk caught a short five-yard pass from Tom Brady for a touchdown against the Buffalo Bills. With the ball on his right hand, Gronk kicked up his left leg, took a few hops on his right leg, and then smashed the ball down with authority. Thus, the Gronk spike was born. 
Many players have spiked the ball after scoring touchdowns over the years, but few have added the personality to the spike that Gronk has. In fact, the Gronk spike is now part of the Urban Dictionary. The Gronk spike is defined as the action of forcing an object, usually a football, into the ground with tremendous force as a way of celebration. At number two, we have Cam Newton's Superman. And I didn't really know whether to include Cam Newton in here or not because he's technically a free agent, but in my mind, he is still one of the best QBs in the league, free agent or not, and I really hope he gets signed soon. He is perhaps the most recognizable player in the NFL today. His charisma and talent are only surpassed by his size and love for the game. Cam started his college career at the University of Florida as a freshman backup to eventual Heisman Trophy winner Tim Tebow. After running into some legal and academic trouble in his sophomore year, the quarterback announced that he would transfer away from Florida following the season. The team ended up winning the national championship that season, so theoretically if he didn't do that, he would have had an extra championship. But then again, he wouldn't have been able to spend his junior season at Blinn College in Texas, then lead that team to the junior college national championship, then become the top recruited player from either high school or junior college that year, and then eventually go to Auburn University, where he would have a dream season in 2010 and would lead a come-from-behind victory over rival Alabama in the Iron Bowl. They would eventually go on to win the national championship over Oregon, and Cam Newton was selected as Heisman Trophy winner for the year. After the Heisman Trophy presentation in New York, Cam declared for the 2011 NFL Draft. His size and skill set was something that had never been seen in a quarterback in the NFL. There had been other running QBs, but never one that was as large and powerful as Cam Newton. Cam became the first overall pick in the 2011 NFL Draft by the Carolina Panthers, becoming one of the few players that would win the national championship, win the Heisman, and be selected number one overall in the NFL Draft. There's been only one player since Cam Newton to have been able to accomplish that feat, and that's Joe Burrow. He would become the league MVP in 2015 and would lead the Panthers to compete in Super Bowl 50, and Cam would earn the nickname Superman in the NFL because of the amazing physical feats he performed. But he says that he's had that nickname all of his life. To add to the superhero persona, after touchdowns, Cam would simulate tearing off his shirt just as Superman does in the comics. He is certainly the closest thing to a superhero we see on the field today. I would include the dab here, but he only really did that for one year, and I don't know man, I didn't want to trigger most of you guys. Which brings us to number one, and this isn't because I'm a Cowboy fan, this is just the celebration I see the most. At number one, we have Ezekiel Elliott feeding himself. Ezekiel Elliott was the epitome of clutch in college. In his sophomore season, Zeke single-handedly carried the Buckeyes to the 2014 National Championship despite the team being forced to rely on their third-string quarterback during the inaugural college football playoff. Elliott was about as sure a bet coming out of college as anyone has ever seen. He was called the most developed runner to come out of the draft since Adrian Peterson in 2007. When the Dallas Cowboys took him fourth overall in the NFL Draft in 2016, they knew they were getting a proven winner. Zeke didn't disappoint, racking up over 1,600 rushing yards in his rookie season, claiming the rushing title, and finishing second in Offensive Rookie of the Year votes to his teammate and backfield companion, Dak Prescott. In fact, at the award presentation, Zeke joined Dak on stage to accept the award, and Dak jokingly asked, Do we have a knife so I can cut this in half? Zeke went on to lead the league in rushing in two of his first three years and shows no signs of stopping. His signature move was established when he was at Ohio State during the national championship run in 2014, because he was the focal point of the offense and carried the team on his back. He would mimic scooping food into his mouth whenever he broke off a long run, scored a touchdown, or gained a very important first down. Soon his feeding motion turned into the saying, feed the beast, and Ohio State would keep feeding him, and they continued winning. It seems as though that mentality has carried over to the Dallas Cowboys as well. And those are the greatest signature moves in the NFL today. Is there anyone that you're missing or any signature moves in NFL history that particularly jump out at you guys? Because if you guys enjoyed this video, we'll circle back and cover the greatest signature moves in all of NFL history. I'm your boy Microphone, and I'll catch you guys in the next upload.